Today we're making gingerbread houses and people. Keep watching! I'm Brandy and this is Making It My Own DIYs. For the first projects, we're going to have two gingerbread houses. I thrifted two of these little church bird houses and they are in terrible shape. Really, really sad shape. I'm going to give you a good look. They've been dusted off. I've used a brush. I've used wipes to clean them as good as I can clean them. This one has more damage. It's um, had some water damage on the top, which has caused this to kind of bow and warp. Looks like it's coming apart. There's water damage on the bottom. Some stains all over the place. And the little bell is stuck in the top, too. Now I'm going to use two different color browns. I got a, I think it's a latte brown and bambi brown. And um, I'll put those to the side. I'm going to start off by putting down one layer of chalk paint. And I'm doing this so that everything will be somewhat hidden and one color. So all the blue stuff will be, will have white on it. All of the stains will be covered in white and hopefully it will cover up and block some of the stains. I did have to go back over on the areas that had the water marks, um, the water stains, and uh, did two coats on that area. But I'm going to do the whole thing, front, back, bottom, all of it. And by the way, the tags on the bottom of these show that they came from Walmart, but there's no year, so I don't know, I don't know when they came out. You can thrift something. You can thrift a birdhouse. You can thrift an old dollhouse. Just use this for inspiration because I realize we're not all going to find the same thing when we thrift. So think outside the box. What do you have that you can use? Now, once they've both been painted and dried, I'm going to put my coffee latte and my Bambi Brown. I'm going to put them together in a little cup. And then I'm going to just blend them. Now, if you want to just use one color, then you can just use one color. The reason I did this is because I couldn't find quite the color that I was looking for. And I didn't have it. So, I just made it. And you can certainly do the same thing. Now, if you don't do the gingerbread thing, but you watch my videos, so you wanted to give me some support, fantastic. You can use these. Leave them white. Use them as a winter wonderland if you want to. If you want to make it traditional, grab whatever color paint you want to paint this and paint it. You can string lights around it. You can do this so many different ways. This, to me, this is like a blank canvas because you have so many options. But I've had lots of requests for a gingerbread theme. So I'm starting off by doing these for you to see how you like them. Can't you see yourself doing something like this? Look, it's Rudolph. My youngest daughter made Rudolph. She's very crafty. She likes to craft with me and she wanted to share it with you. Okay, so once this is all painted and dried, don't worry about the spots where I bump the white. That's not a big deal. I'm going to cover that back up. And then here's the other one. I left the doors white and inside of the bell house is white as well. And the little spindles, just a couple of little places. They've got to be definitely well dried. Now these are little pieces of candy ornaments and pieces of picks that I cut off. I had a bunch that I thrifted and then I found some little glass. These are glass, the candy cane and the little pieces. Um, I could just cut them off the picks and made them, put them in a big bowl. You can use pom-poms for this. You can use beads for these. You can use buttons. You can use... Um, these are some stars that I thrifted. You can use whatever type of ornaments or decoration you want on yours. Any fake candy. I'm going to use some of my slick paint and it is white. I've got a couple of different brushes to help me out. And I'm going to start off with this. Um, I think this is true red. And I'm going to start painting the poles in the front of the house like candy cane, sort of. Not going to have that traditional swirl look, but I'm going to do like red, white, red, white, red, white, all the way down. Just sort of a little pattern. You don't have to be real precise with this. If it's easier for you to use a paint pen, you could do, you know, paint pen for finer details, whatever you feel like you have a, a better hand for. In the end, all of these um, 
all of the details are really going to be covered in a very fine snow. It's going to give it a very, a really pretty frosted look. So you won't see specific details. So if you make a little bit of a mess with the paint, don't worry about it. Now I'm just going to use my little tool here to dry off between my layers of paint. And I do two layers of that red. And this is the look that it has. And here's the other one. I did them, you know, pretty much both the same way. I'm going to grab some more of that white chalk paint and go back over this cross. It originally was going to be white, but I bumped it too much with the brown paint. So I just went with it. And then now I'm just going to go back over it and touch it up. Now for the bell, I'm going to use this beautiful, glorious gold and a brush that's got some long um, hairs on it so I can reach inside there and paint that bell since I can't push it around or out the uh, MDF or whatever this is made out of is actually swollen and it has closed it in there in the middle so I can't get to it so I'm just very carefully going around the parts of the bell that you can see with this gold and it makes a big difference because the bell was kind of rusty um, I'm assuming since they are actually bird houses that someone had them outside. There's nothing inside of them though, so I don't think a bird ever nested. There's no way to open it to get anything out, but you know, you give it a good shake and there was nothing in there. And then this bell actually is free, so I'm just going to move it around with my fingers and get all the sides. I like this gold over the top of this because it still has that aged look. But it just brings the bell out even more. Now, here's some things that you can use. I'm just giving you an idea. This is something that I thrifted. It's just like pearl beads on a rope or on a cord. You can do that. You can use Rick Rack. You can use those bead stickers from Dollar Tree. You can use the rolls of stickers to adorn windows, doors, shutters. You could wrap them around poles, any way you want to do it. You know when you look at pictures of gingerbread houses, they are very ornate. They have a lot of stuff going on. So, I'm going to go with it. I'm going to go with it and use all the little things that I have on hand. Just to give you some options too. I'm going to do the other door the same way because these are a pair. So, I want them to be similar. Similar but not twins. Now, I have just a tiny bit of this red rickrack and I thought how cute would that be? on the eaves of the house. So I'm going to put them just on the peaks here and make sure that my end is nice and crispy and not frayed. And then I'm going to cross over the top so that I can fold it over on itself and not have to cut it. And you can see what I'm doing. I'm just trying to make sure I don't touch the glue and then press it down and see there. Nice and neat. And you can clip off your edge because once it's glued down, it's not going to fray. It'll stay like you like it. But as a reminder, and people tell me all the time, you can use a lighter to hit the edges of your ribbons and such so that you get the, you know, keep the frays away. It seals the ends. All right, so now I have it on both of them and I have a little more left. So I'm gonna go right here on the steeple, right at the top and add some more of that Rick Rack. I want to use as much as I can before I run out. Think of all the things you can use here. You could use jute twine. You could use baker's twine. Baker's twine would be really cute because, you know, gingerbread, the kitchen theme, the baking theme, baking spirits, right? So this is how it looks when it's got both of those on that house. And then I'm going to add some on the bottom of this one, just right in the front. And trim it off. And then I'm going to add some more of that beading right around this section. This is just going to give it more, um, yeah, y'all know y'all love me saying the word dimension. Yes, I know, I say it every video, but it is so true. It gives it some dimension. It's not laying flat. It gives it more detail. It's more ornate. 
and I just think it's fun. You know, I just think it's fun. So now I'm measuring around this opening to see how much I'm going to need before I trim it off. Then I'll just snip it a little bit longer. That way, if I've made a mistake in my judgment there, I can, um, you know, I'll have a little more to work with. And then I'm just going to go around and I get shaky hands. I, I don't know about y'all, but my hands get shaky. So I found it sometimes helpful to either hold my wrist that's holding the, the glue gun, hold it with my other hand and it helps kind of steady me a little bit. You don't have to use hot glue. I am using Gorilla Hot Glue, but you can definitely just use um, any type of glue that you like. I like the hot glue doing these projects for y'all because I can do it quicker. And time is of the essence when you're doing six and more projects a week, two videos a week. And by the way, if you're new to my channel, welcome. I do put out content on Mondays and Thursdays at 5 o'clock Central Standard Time. And that is PM. Welcome to the channel. All right, so now we've got a little bit going on here. Starting to look better. Starting to look more like it might be gingerbread, right? Now it's time to do putting the icing on the gingerbread. So I'm using this paint here. And I'm going to just, on the top of this house, I'm going to make the roof a little different. I'm going to use the little curves that you see in a lot of gingerbread houses. I am not trying to make this look perfect and I have no intentions of measuring for this type of a style because when you're making gingerbread cookies, most of the time they're not perfect. Am I right or am I right? They still get kind of messy, especially if you're doing it as a group, as a family. Kind of gets kind of fun, but kind of messy. Okay, so here's one side of the roof. You gotta be so careful, so careful while it's wet. Then I'm just going to put like a little line here, a little squiggly line on the top that does eventually drip down. I'm going to do it on both sides. Now I'm going to the other house. This is where I'm going to kind of use a ruler. I'm not precise with it, but it does help me get my pencil lines. I'm just taking a pencil and making like a, a plaid checkerboard, whatever you want to call it, only without the different color tiles in it. And this is going to be the outline that I'll use to make the next style. This is going to look sort of like diamonds on the top. You can see that there. And then I will start following those lines. If you need, if you have this type of glue, which I mean not glue, paint, whatever you want to call this. If you have this, I do recommend that you frequently wipe the tip off so that you're not smearing anything because it will get sort of like a little bubble on the end and you don't want to make a big mess. Also, when you're using the bottle paint like this, be sure that you kind of, uh, I use the term that you burp it, you kind of shake it down and make sure that way it doesn't splatter when you start using it and just take your time. So you're going to do both sides and then let it try. And now I'm just making like a little red and white ornament wreath or candy wreath to go on one of them. I thought it would be cute since I had a bunch of these left. And I'm just going to make a circle to put them together. Now with that paint, it does take about 12 hours to completely dry. So you, this is a project that is not fast, but it is so worth the payoff. Oh my gosh. At the end of this video, y'all... If you're not shocked, then you must truly be a professional because I was very shocked. I have no training for this type of thing, no training with crafts, no training with art other than high school art, you know. So for me to have the results that actually came for this, it, I was surprised and very pleased, very, very pleased. These will be in my house for Christmas where I can see them. Now I started off with those candy canes sort of on the poles there, but they kept popping off when I touched it. So uh, I did move them. You'll see that at the end of the video. Now I've got some tiny little crystal beads and they're sort of iridescent on one side and crystal on the other. I'm just going to take these and just add them here and there on the top. There's no pattern and I don't do it in every single square. I just add a few pieces. Do this however you like. You could even use like a table scatter here. 
you could use confetti you could use sequins you could use beads anything that you would like to use you could even use some faux gumdrops faux candy of any sort now once the houses are decorated we can start putting on that beautiful frosty look so I'm just going to be using a flat brush and then I have another brush that's a little bit finer so I can get in all the little spaces and every place that I want to put snow I am going to use my Mod Podge so that's what I'm doing here I'm adding some Mod Podge here and there I do recommend that you pour your Mod Podge into a separate cup or put it on a different surface because when you start putting on the snow it's going to begin to stick to your brush here and there and you don't want to be dipping that back into your Mod Podge. Going along here, I'm going to go all around the brown parts, all over the tops of the candies, any place that I want it to look nice and frosty, which is basically the entire thing. I did not frost the door, but I certainly did everything else. So you can see how I'm doing it, where I'm putting it. And then I'm, you got to really put it on kind of thick on the top when you got those grooves in there like I have. So I added it to the peaks. You can see where it dripped a little bit down and I like that. It looks snowy. I'll go all over this and then I'll just take the snow that's underneath it or grab the bag and then sprinkle it on there. Put this over a tray. This is going to make a mess. So put it over a tray. And then that way you can just scoop it off of the tray and continue to use it. Nothing will get wasted this way. And when you're finally done with your project, you can put it in another bag and save it for another project. So this is just where I'd missed a couple places with the glue. I'm adding some more glue. Just going to grab some more of that and sprinkle it down in there and see it's fixed. That's all you have to do. Now on the steeple here, you can see how some of my snow is mixed in there. I'm just using some of my extra snow and just sprinkling over the top. If you get a big enough coat on there, you can kind of pat it down with your fingers to help stick it into your Mod Podge. If you don't have Mod Podge, you could also use Elmer's glue. Some type of a liquid glue would work for this too, I think. As long as it isn't fast dry because you won't be able to get your glue down and your snow on it in time for it to stick. So here are my windows. I traced my windows out, put some string around those, some ribbon in the middle, put my pieces of candy all over this. And I'm just going to continue around here. You can see where I put things. So you didn't see me do it one at a time, but you can see I've tried to show you step by step every time I've done something, the difference. So go back and slow it down if you need to, or go back and pause it. Take some screenshots if you need to do screenshots, but you're going to get a really good look in the end also. It is Subscriber Appreciation Month this November on this channel. I want to say a big thank you by giving back. If you are interested in joining a chance to win a giveaway, then follow the directions in this page, screenshot it, follow the rules, and good luck. The next is a clay gingerbread people or a clay gingerbread family. So I'm going to use some of this. Um, this is from Hobby Lobby. It's modeling clay. It's air dry. And then some cookie cutters. This is from Target originally. I thrifted them. Alright, so you see this is how they look. They have like a rounded edge, which is the top, and then the bottom has a really thin edge. That's the part that you want to put down into your clay. So I'm just going to work this clay in my hands really, really well. I have two different kinds of clay. The other one is stickier and it sticks to metal and plastic and all that kind of stuff so it did not work out. I did try it but it didn't work. But the one from Hobby Lobby here is does really really well. And if there are any issues when you're doing it I'm going to show you exactly how to fix it because you know I run into issues too. Now I'm just trying to make sure that it's about the same thickness and about the same you know and enough width for me to put it on so I've got it flipped over the right way I'm gonna start with the big gingerbread man press it down with my palm all the way through and kind of wiggle it so I know it cut through and then there is Papa I'll put him aside and then I'll work on the rest of the family now mama's foot got stuck 
So this is what you do to fix it. You just use your, fam your fingers and just mold it back into place. That's all you have to do. Same thing with the arms, the head. If anything gets ripped off, you can just put it back together. And it's wet so it's going to stick. And then when it dries, you're perfect. So here's our whole family. And I'm just going to use the Bambi Brown to color these cute little gingerbread peoples. Now I let this clay dry for 24 hours because it says if you don't and you put paint on it while it's still wet, it could cause cracking and separation. And I did not want that to happen because I don't want this to be a cracked cookie. I want it to be a pretty cookie. I'm going to paint each and every one of these on all of the surfaces except the back. You do the back, of course. This beautiful brown color. Every one of them is going to get a good coat. Once they dry, I am going to give them one more coat so that you don't see any brush marks. Maybe you could use a roller for something like this, or if you have a brown chalk paint, that would probably do the trick in one coat. Here's our family, nice and dry and ready to be beautiful. So I have got a variety of paints. I chose these because they really are the colors that are in the, um, you know, Christmas. Red, green, and white. All right, so I've put a face on Papa over there already with my white paint. And now I'm going to give him a bow tie. You can make a scarf if you wanted to. You could pull up pictures of gingerbread men and then just kind of copy whatever you see that you might like. And I'm going to do the little squiggle for his arms and legs. Again, be patient, kind of shake it, burp it, make sure you don't get a bunch of bubbles in there. Then I'm going to go on to the red and give him some red buttons. I'm kind of pushing it down and then swirling it just a tad because it does have a tendency to peak or have little points sticking up, but I guess icing probably does that too. Maybe so. Now for the next one, I'm going to go on to Mama and I'm going to give her red lips could have given her eyelashes too. Can always do that with a fine tip sharpie, I think. We're going to define her little arms too and her legs. You can do straight lines if you don't have enough room to make a curl or a squiggle. You can just do straight lines or you can just color it completely in, whichever way you want to do it. I want to give her a little green dress. So I'm just going along with my green paint and I am just kind of bumping it up and down, going around the border to make a shape that looks like her dress, sort of an outline to her dress. And then we'll go on to each of the kids and put their little eyes and their little faces on. Now with the little boy, the one in the middle, I actually gave him kind of a, I messed up his smile just a little bit, but that's okay. Because you know what? My smile is not straight, it's crooked. Yep, because God made me perfectly imperfect, just like he made you and everybody else. But you know what? We're perfect in his eyes, right? So we're gonna put buttons on him, just like dad. The little girl's gonna get some red lips too. We're gonna do her hands. And then I thought it would be really cute to let, give her a dress just like mom. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to grab that blue and do that. Now, if you prefer for holidays, baby blue, pink, yellow, um, heck, purple, whatever colors you like, then you can decorate your gingerbread any way you like them, any way you like them. And you can probably get cookie cutters that would work at the Dollar Tree. But I was so tickled to find the whole family in one pack, so that was just perfect for this and then the little baby's gonna get tiny tiny red dots I just barely put pressure on the bottle to do his little buttons and then to top it off mama and little girl are going to get a little bow on their head to match the bow ties the bow tie that dad's wearing just like that once more to her. 
You can make hair on your people. If you want these to look sort of like your family members, you know, you can kind of do blue eyes or brown eyes or, you know, decorate the dress. You can use glitter on them. Whatever you want to do to make them your own. Little more detail. I'm just going to go in here and put some green polka dots right along the edge hem of the little dresses. So, I made one more that you did not see, and this wasn't round. I made it just like a cookie and then formed it with my hands. And now I'm just going to write a very special word that you will need to keep in mind on this cookie. This is my Joy Gingerbread Cookie. And now I'm going to go through here and put polka dots around the edge. Again, it's going to take some time for the paint on these ornaments and the paint on the gingerbread people to dry. If you are going to do these projects, this is not something you can do in one day. You will not have enough time. You are going to have to stretch this out over a few days so that you have time for everything to dry in between. It took me three days to do these projects. On and off. You know, I had other things I was doing in between. Because these little gingerbread people are going to be living happily around our buildings that we've made, I want to blend them in with the scenery by adding a little snow on them. So I'm going to go over the head, the shoulders, the tops of the feet, and I'm going to add some snow there. You don't have to do this or, you know, maybe you would want to use glitter here. Maybe you would want to trace this out and glue some type of a ribbon or cord around it. Whatever you like. So I'll do the tops of the feet here where snow would normally fall. And then you'll see here after I'm done with the rest of them that I do go back and paint over there the little hand and feet area with snow as well. Because who knows? Maybe they were playing in the snow. We don't know. They could have been. They're set up for a snowball fight. You'll see. This is easy to do. Just to say it again, I appreciate you all so very much. YouTube is my full-time job. I stay at home and do this and this is how I make the money. So I appreciate every time you watch, share, like, subscribe. I say it and I hope it doesn't get old to hear it because the new people need to know that they're appreciated and that I do not intend to waste anybody's time on this channel. So I'm very blessed and happy to have you here. And among the things that you could win this month are power sanders, hand sanders, um, let's see, I think some glue guns and glue sticks, there is some um, twinkle lights, and then of course all kinds of Christmas crafting supplies. So you're just going to get a variety of goodies. So be sure that you click that notification bell so you don't miss your chance. And be sure that you click on the community tab and check regularly, at least at the end of every seven days when we're doing the giveaways, okay? So for this cookie, I'm going to completely cover it in Mod Podge and then sprinkle this all over the top. This almost looks like a sugar cookie now, doesn't it? A gingerbread sugar cookie? I guess if I'm making cookies, I can do it any way I want. It's so cute, though. I like it. So here we are putting snow on the hands and the feet. Easy enough. So I'm wondering, are you guys doing the gingerbread theme? Very specifically, I have had at over 12, over 12, probably more than that, people asking me to do a gingerbread theme. So I hope this is something that you enjoy because I had so much fun doing it. I really did. Here are the projects that we did. Oh my gosh, look at those churches. Look at the gingerbread houses. They're so pretty. Oh my gosh, I love these. I love all the candy. And look, there's mom and baby at the steps. Standing there waiting. 
and then here's dad and he's on one side of the fence and the kids have a snowball in front of them here's the other building all the way up to the top you can see the bell there this is nice and frosty you could definitely use a thicker snow if you wanted to but this fine textured stuff really did the trick maybe you could even use like an iridescent white glitter if you wanted to you know to do something like this this isn't the same texture as glitter though it's really really light and powdery I want you to know that I believe in you and I feel like today that I need to say to somebody that you are loved and you're appreciated and you're enough it's been on my mind and I really feel like somebody needs to hear that heck all of us need to hear that from time to time right I would love it if you would subscribe if you love budget-friendly DIYs that are unique and I can show you step by step what to do I would love to have you and share in the video is also very helpful to the channel I thank you so very much for stopping by. I hope you find some joy in your day. I'll see you again soon. Bye.